ready to declare the cooling tin project as finished in terms of all the nipping and tucking and welding and fixing and repairing and modifying and all that cool stuff. <laughs> over, done, I quit, over, over, done, done, done. Let's get the final preparations for paint done, which means I need to strip everything off. I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint the case. I wanna get all that stuff nice and cleaned up for a quickie paint job. And we'll let that cure, put it all together, see if the thing runs. Now there's some more steps involved. In fact, there's a couple of things that I wanna do with the engine as I take all of the cooling tin off. I want to back up a step on this plate. I should have flattened this plate before I installed it because I know it's going to leak so I'll be pulling the plate off and flattening it on a surface plate or something resembling a surface plate and then reinstalling it but there's another thing I made a bit of a boo-boo I had the engine upside down like this and I started to rotate the engine without the distributor installed it gave the distributor drive shaft an opportunity to slip out of position and it boogered up the drive gear a little bit and i don't think i ruined it i didn't break any teeth on it but it, it did booger it up a little bit it's brass so it's relatively soft but there's some swarf in the engine i want to see if i can flush that out i don't want it to land in a bearing or clog up an oil passage so i'm going to see if i can flush that out which will have the added benefit of flushing anything else out that's in there so i'm going to see if i can rig up a way to pretty much fill the engine with kerosene and then dump it all out and then sift through the kerosene that comes out to see if i find anything interesting especially maybe a little piece of brass or two and then there's another thing that i want to do tomorrow uh, some expandable push rod tubes will arrive because i made another boo-boo when i was drilling this hole my drill bit went in too far and boogered up the push rod tube and I actually put a small hole in the push rod tube that's right behind that point so since these are already kind of rusty, this one is banged up from whoever put that expandable pushrod tube in. Let's just replace all four of these. I've got a set of eight coming, so we'll see how it goes when we may replace all four of these too. They're a little rusty, and with that rust, I'm a little afraid that they're gonna leak. So let's get started on this, take off the cooling tin, and see if we can rig up some way to flush the engine. <laughs> With the exception of the hole in the pushrod tube, <laughs> I believe the engine is sealed up to about right here <laughs> where the oil cooler adapter bolts on. So I think I should be able to get kerosene all the way up to here. We'll see what leaks. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a leak out of several spots because kerosene's pretty thin. Well, let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. And then I'll dump the kerosene here and pull this plate off so I can get to the screen and hopefully find a little bit of brass. We'll see. <laughs> Don't think I want this in my oil galleys either. Somebody used too much RTV. see any brass I see a little bit of crud but no brass look at all that RTV what a nightmare there's a piece see that little gold bit there see if we can drag that out so I don't want to use a method that's gonna make matters worse <laughs> so I've got a wire here I'm gonna take this and grease it up 
and stuff this in there and hopefully that grease will be sticky enough to grab the, the little piece of brass and any grease that I leave behind is no trouble. Let's try this. So it was just on the left side of the case parting line. Well, it seemed like a good idea, but I don't think this is doing it. I don't see any brass in this. Let's try something else. shiny bits in there. I'm gonna send some more through, see if we can do any more flushing. I went ahead and filled it up with kerosene one more time. If I had been thinking clearly, I wouldn't have put the screen back in there, but I wasn't, and so I did. Right. There's some crud here. Well, I think we're doing the right thing. It is Friday night. I've got the whole weekend ahead of me, and I couldn't think of something that I'd rather be doing. <laughs> These paper towels were placed there to catch crud while I was wire brushing and doing all other kinds of things. Here's the trick. To remove the rags, you use a shop vac. Happen to have one here. And that makes sure that the crud comes out with the rag. I think we're ready to move on to the next thing. I want to replace this one. I have to replace this one because I put a hole in it with a drill bit. And this one's a little dinged up from when someone put this in here. So I might as well do all four of these. Now to get these out, I need to take the push rods themselves out. And that means I need to take the rocker arm off. These adjuster screws look kind of beat up. This is kind of flattened and this one is kind of pitted. I don't know what's going on here. This one's really bad shape. I think that would make it difficult to keep the valves adjusted. So I'm gonna see if I can dig up some adjusters that are either new or in better shape than that. Those adjusters would make us curious about the tips of the valves. Are they concave, right? This actually looks like they've been reconditioned at some point. It looks like they might have seen a valve grinder. The bevels on the edge are a little different on each one. Maybe that's something we see on brand new valves, I don't know. But I've played around with a valve grinder and this is what mine looked like. But the tips of the valves look good, so that's, that's a happy thing. I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to retort the heads because now I've got access to the studs that are underneath the, the rocker arm. These are 10 millimeter studs. There are no case savers and they're known for pulling out, but I think I need to do it. That's actually something that's a good idea to do when you're tearing down an engine is to retorque the heads to expose any studs that are pulling out because that'd be the time to find out. Now would not be the time to find out. So hopefully that step goes well. If I pull a stud, we have a whole new ball game and I'm not really looking for that right now. I don't know if anybody else cares about this, but I like to put stuff back right where I got it from in the same orientation that I got it from. So I'm gonna label all of these push rods and I'm gonna label it on the end where the rockers are. I don't know if that does any good at all. It's just what I'm gonna do. This is one exhaust. So I'm gonna go one E. I'm gonna put it in this bottle here so the oil can drain out and not make a big mess. Let's see what this head is torqued to right now. We're going for 23 foot pounds. That started moving right at 20. Let's see if everything else is at the same point. So that one's enough. That was, I got up to 25 on that one. That one is enough. That one is enough. So let's just put this one up to 25, I guess. 
There we are. Okay. That one's good. I like how uneventful this is. That's good. I'm following the torque sequence that's in the Tom Wilson rebuild book here. Okay, we didn't pull any studs. Let's go back over them just to tempt fate. That's the one that moves some for me. Great news. I think I should do the other side too, just because I, I did find one that needed a little bit of torque. These adjusters have the same problem. Really, really worn out. That is pitted and flat, just in terrible shape. Wow. So we're gonna replace those. This one was iffy, but it's to torque. Whoa, that's not torqued at all. What was going on there? Get these out of here. I'll be replacing them with a spring loaded type because this engine expands and contracts when it gets hot and cold. These are kind of springs. The accordion folds in these pushrod tubes, they're meant to expand and contract with the engine. So I think I want to put a design in there that'll do that. This design is rigid, but that's kind of the problem that it's it's rigid. Came out easy. So this will be my spare. This will be my onboard spare. I'll take this one with me. I guess I need to take some seals too, but this will get cleaned up and be thrown in the, the onboard spares box. This part I don't think is very graceful. Here's where I drilled this poor thing. That was dumb. That was a clumsy mistake there. Make the most of it. Now I guess it's apparent why we have to take those push rods out first. <laughs> Hi Joy, taking those others out so much, I think I'm gonna do these two. Who knew all along that I was gonna do all eight of them? The engine is about as clean as I'm going to get it, so I'm going to move on to all the other parts and pieces. There's a few more doodads to do, so let's take a look at that. I want to work on this oil plate a little bit. It looks like it's gotten cranked down pretty tight at some point. This area here is raised. 
I started to file a little bit of this area here and you can see there's a, a pronounced area that got filed when nothing else got touched. So this thing is pretty warped. I'm gonna try and save it. Now what I was hoping to do was to turn it upside down and put it on a surface plate and move, you know, do one of those, right, on a sandpaper. But not, not gonna be able to do that because there's this little ridge here that's a little bit higher than this area. I guess that kind of centers it in the hole in the bottom of the engine. And this is way higher than everything, and I don't want to take that down. So I'm going to have to get to this area, each one of those, without disturbing all of that. So I'll just take the file and go on the side, and we'll work on that a little bit. I'm going to try something else. Somewhere I read or got the idea that you're supposed to use these without sealant and that would indeed make things a lot easier so you don't have to clean all that off every time you do an oil change. I don't know, I don't, I don't really mind that, but what I'm trying is I've gone ahead and used some Permatex 3H on this and I'm going to let it dry. So hopefully it doesn't stick, but these are kind of a joke. These paper gaskets are... I don't know, I don't think they're really suited to the task. So maybe this will help them seal a little bit better and we'll see if we can minimize how much this thing drips from this particular location. This should help. This is one of those just see if I can do it deals. Obviously these oil plates are available and pretty cheap, but this is the one I've got in front of me. So let's see what we can do. Holding it in the vise with the, the drain plug. It's six sided and I've got six holes. This should have a much better chance of sealing, I believe. It's not totally flat. The, the file took all the way around the edge and the areas around the holes. And then these areas here, the innermost portion, it's pretty much untouched. I could have kept going to get down to that, I guess. But we're just gonna try this. So here's the super duper heavily modified to be stock again intake manifold. <laughs> Similar situation here, just want to kind of flatten this area so the gasket doesn't have to work as hard. So I could do the surface plate thing on this, but that'd be pretty awkward turning this upside down. I think I can get close enough with the file. So let's see how this works. I'm just going to go over it real light and this will kind of reveal how not flat it is. So if it was flat, this file would be filing everything. So it's raised here around this hole. You see it's kind of shiny there. This isn't so bad really over there. This is a little raised and the end here is raised. This looks like some drama here now that we notice. So I'll file this a little bit, get it nice and flat, and then that'll be cool. Progress report. This isn't gonna take much at all. This is in pretty good shape. I'm gonna finish things off with a file that's a little bit dull, maybe a lot dull. got plenty of metal and sandpaper grit down inside there <laughs> I'll want to uh, rinse this really well to get all that stuff out otherwise it'll go straight into the engine and that's not good while we're at it let's flatten this a little bit you can see the machining marks on it I think we could pretty easily get this aluminum 
a little bit smoother than that. So we'll use the surface plate this time. Surface plate being a piece of marble. It's making pretty quick work of it. Some old 600. I think that's cool enough. So there's the difference. Worth a few minutes work. Making some real progress here. I'm gonna go over all of this stuff and make sure that there's no sharp edges or any little finishing touches that are needed. And wire brush a lot of this one more time. And then we'll be getting ready for paint. This is getting kind of cool. Because this generator didn't have any cooling, you may recall this portion of the, the cooling tin had no outlet. And so we cut some space here for the cooling. That means this generator has lived kind of a hard life. So I wanna do two things. I wanna test it. And if it tests good, I, I wanna put some bearings in it. I did order some bearings for it. They go in these caps, so I'll have to pull these caps off. But let's do a quick test. The problem that I have is I only have one test cable to do this with. So we're gonna to have to be kind of clever here. This is my negative terminal here. I need the generator to be grounded. I need to not touch this with any part of the generator case now because it's touching that negative post. I need to ground the DF field or the DF terminal. And then I'm gonna connect hot to the plus and this thing should spin. I'll connect the hot with this. I have an old cotter pin, an axle cotter pin DF. I'm going to put that right there and hold it up against the oops, against the case. See if this guy will spin. Nice. Okay, that should be plenty. Let's keep it. Need to get this off. I, I really don't expect it to take much, but I do have a puller here, so let's use it. Cute little puller. Hey, look at that. I'm doing it by hand here. Seems like some extra steps, but I would much rather do it graceful than to struggle. Don't want to lose this little Woodruff key there. Okay, want some attention. Okay, so we're going to give it some attention. made one of these for yourself you really should consider it <laughs> it's a neat tool just use an old chisel cut it off the end weld on an extension or however you want to do it a bit or something permanent however but man it's great I think we can clean him up a little dusty. Why do you bet these bearings are pretty dry? This thing had to be running hot, all that crud in there. Wow, that's terrible. We'll get it cleaned up. That feels pretty gritty too. Wow, I think we did the right thing here. Crazy. What a mess. Well, you gotta love these old things. It 
seems like that should slide through there a little easier. I might have bent things up. I want this to slide easy so the brushes advance as they wear. That's more like it. So I want to get this cleaned up, get the corrosion off of these terminals, clean up these screws. I think I'll use dielectric grease when I put it back together, just to be sure. And I want to paint the outside of it, so we'll get this ready for that. kind of crusty don't blame it This paint project got a little out of hand. Here is the engine. All of this stuff goes on it. And this doesn't even include the accessories, like the generator and the fuel pump and the distributor and the coil. So there's more beyond this. Hey buddy, what you doing? That didn't need paint. So I'm going to be shooting three different Rust-Oleum paints here. All of the cooling tin is going to be flat black. I believe that dissipates heat better. All this flat black, especially the valve covers. This would be a terrible thing to have in chrome because that just reflects heat back into the engine. So we're going to keep these stock ones. I kind of like them. Just go with flat black. This one I may do high heat because this area here will get hot. I'm gonna do the muffler, of course, and the tailpipe. The thing about high heat paint is it's got stuff in it to help it do its thing, but it acts like an insulator. So if I wanna keep the heat inside something like the exhaust system, all right, that's cool. I'll use high heat. But I would not wanna use high heat on say the valve covers because that's the opposite of what i want them to do or the push rod tubes all this is going to be gloss black and that will be easier to clean not that i'll ever clean anything this will look nice in gloss black the fan can be gloss black the doggy can be gloss black oh boy Another step closer to hearing this engine run. 
Next time we'll reassemble the generator, install some fancy pushrod tubes, and start bolting everything back onto the long block. That's a really fun part of an engine project because you get to see it all come together. I hope your projects are going well and I look forward to sharing more of this one in the next video. I'll see you there.